Bonjour. Good afternoon then, and here is then, welcome to your class on uh, Captain James Cook. Um, these are video classes which um, follow on from the real um, uh, live classes which we had uh, in the first uh, few months of the year. Uh, and we're going to continue with this uh, structure which I explained to you then, which I'm going to uh, put online a series of videos, uh, video classes, and then we will meet once a week in a Zoom meeting for your questions and so on. So the second expedition, and the word, using the word expedition, allows me to come back to this question of how words are not neutral and that the traditional word used in the voyages just tend to have a uh, positive um, uh, slant to it. So at the end, we left uh, James Cook at the end of the first ex expedition. He uh, re reports back to London, goes immediately uh, to the Admiralty to give his reports. Uh, of course, before before seeing his family, because this is uh, this is what uh, Navy officers do at the time. Um, and uh, the uh, they they had had news of of, uh, of his arrival shortly before, but they uh, uh, many many people were very pleased to see the the ship back because uh, obviously a number of people had, had assumed that it was missing or lost. Um, this was known to a lot of people as uh, Joseph Banks' expedition, expedition has come back. Um, Banks was in many ways more of a star than Cook. This was partly because he had uh, much uh, more prestigious social circles um, and due to his uh, his wealthy background and uh, and his his uh, his friends around London, uh, nevertheless uh, Cook uh, got a promotion. He's not yet promoted to captain, but he is from now commander. And so we're beginning to look at the question of the second expedition, which uh, rapidly uh, became uh, an, uh, a part of the the news agenda and the admiralty's uh, agenda. Now, of course, many of the key historical questions, uh, Cook's role in relation to imperialism, his attitude to the local peoples, uh, the significance of the different activities taken for granted by uh, British elite at the time, naming and uh, discovering and claiming possession of and so on, uh, are just the same for the second and third voyages as they are for the first. Uh, and this is a, a reason we will spend a little less time on the, these voyages than we did on the first. Uh, nevertheless, and here are just a, a couple of words um, from the point of view of the exam, it is important that you have in mind uh, plenty of examples of incidents or reflections from all three voyages. Whatever the question, uh, if you speak only of the first expedition in reply to a quite general question, you will be uh, penalised. Uh, in addition, it may well be that the question itself will be worded in a way to encourage you to take into account the second and third voyages. Otherwise, of course, understandably, the death of Cook on the third voyage is considered a major event and a major historical controversy because of the many varied and indeed uh, contradictory uh, interpretations which have been produced in connection with his, his, his death. So the second voyage, uh, talk of a second voyage, was soon in the air. Uh, two new ships were fitted up, the Resolution and the Adventure. Now, these ships were initially to be named uh, Drake and Raleigh, after Sir Francis Drake and Sir Walter Raleigh, uh, two um, imperial uh, uh, colonial naval uh, heroes. Um, but the ship's names were changed so as not to excessively annoy the Spanish states, um, since Drake and Raleigh were both uh, well famous for having defeated uh, the Spanish Perhaps also the names Adventure and Resolution were taken in a sort of public relations exercise so that the expedition uh, appeared to be more of uh, an expedition of explorers and less uh, an expedition of conquerors. Um, note uh, for comparison, uh, the um, expeditions of La Pérouse in France um, chose uh, names which were uh, far more uh, scientific. For example, one of them was called the uh, La Boussole, uh, uh, which obviously has a different uh, 
uh, a different um, tone uh, than things like Resolution and Adventure, which followed on, of course, from the Endeavour. Uh, um, um, tremendously important also that there were two ships in the second expedition. It, it is uh, far, far safer to travel with two ships than only one. Uh, and uh, the question is not so much why did they get two ships for the second expedition, but why did they only get one for the first? And it's difficult not to conclude that the survival or otherwise of the, um, the crew and indeed of Cook himself were not as important um, to the Admiralty um, at the time of the first expedition, ex expedition as they were at the time of the, of the second. Uh, the two ships also allow us to, to, to have a very um, vivid uh, notion of how dangerous uh, sailing was, uh, as we shall see on two occasions. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not sure on which expedition that happens here, but at least on at least one occasion, the ships will lose each other and not be able to find each other for a long time. Um, and I, I think, you know, in, in today's uh, world with uh, GPS and uh, sophisticated um, navigation, it's, it's good to be reminded uh, just how far from uh, Cook's reality that was. Uh, in the second uh, voyage, the uh, Royal Society had a considerably lesser role than they had had in the first. Uh, if you remember correctly, they had been at the origin of the first voyage. Uh, nevertheless, there were three astronomers on board. Um, and their job was to test H4, the, uh, uh, the fourth uh, chronometer uh, produced by um, Harrison, um, which was... A couple of several decades after the first one, he's really spent his life um, on on this problem, uh, and these chronometers, perhaps you remember, were on board uh, in order to uh, help determine uh, longitude, um, and the astronomers were supposed to be um, comparing the uh, determination of longitude by the chronometers by, by calculation from the chronometers. Uh, with the traditional method, which is by measuring the distance to the loon, to, not to the loon, to the moon. Um, and I, I must admit, I would be personally incapable of uh, measuring the distance to, to, to the moon, but uh, that was the traditional method. And indeed, the, uh, the tables necessary for the lunar uh, method were still published for many, many decades uh, by the Royal Navy after Cook, even after chron chronometers had taken over. But at the beginning of uh, Cook's second expedition, uh, the chronometers were a, uh, a, new, uh, a new idea um, as, uh, as, uh, and, and rather controversial. So the ships, are, there were about 118 people on the resolution, including 18 marines. There's, let's say, 18 soldiers. So 18 soldiers to control the 118 uh, people, and especially uh, um, guaranteeing to some extent against mutiny, uh, and also uh, to be the the armed uh, uh, section um, of the crew uh, were um, violent battles to to break out with the local peoples. On the adventure, there were only eighty three. Uh, people. Uh, both of these ships were uh, heavily armed, uh, uh, so they were, the, the, the ships were getting ready, and they were excited about H4 and the other chronometers um, by uh, put together by John Arnold, because they took more than one chronometer with them. Uh, we'll come back to the chronometers in the section on science, but uh, just a reminder that these were extremely rare and expensive instruments. It has been somebody estimated that the chronometer cost a fifth of the cost of a ship. So the news went round that Joseph Spank's second expedition was, was, was on its way, was, was going to set off, and of course this was not going to be the case, uh, because Joseph uh, Banks uh, wanted a more comfortable ride than the previous time, and he wanted more space for himself and for uh, his servants, and so he, he uh, insisted on a an expensive re refit, which he um, which he paid for himself, which involved uh, expanding the upper deck. Uh, when we get to the the lecture on the ship itself, we will see more um, detail um, on, uh, on this. Unfortunately, he expanded the upper deck so much that when they went to 
uh, uh, have a little test sail. It was top heavy and it was in, impossible to sail like that. Uh, and uh, this caused a big row uh, uh, between Joseph Banks um, and the Admiralty. And uh, uh, finally, uh, Joseph Banks then decided he was not going to go. And he was replaced as chief botanist um, by Forster. Uh, this was a big row, this uh, this question of uh, Joseph Banks' uh, refit and, uh, well, failed refit as it, as it turned out. Uh, and it was, uh, there was a p one point at which, which it was, it was, it was, seemed likely that the House of Commons would debate the question. So, uh, off we go to the, uh, the, the, the details of the second voyage. The main intention being further discovery, I quote, further discovery towards the South Pole. Um, and one of the things that they, uh, they took with them on this um, second voyage uh, was uh, a whole pile of medals. These were medals created with the king's head uh, and pictures of the two ships on them. And they were, and I'm quoting, to, de to be distributed to the natives of and left upon new discovered countries as testimonies of being the first discoverers. OK, so well, clearly don't, in the traditional colonial language that these are, uh, that these la lands in some ways don't really exist because we're about to discover them. We're the first discoverers. That, that, that is to say that Europeans are the only people uh, who, who count. October 1772, then, um, they are off to Madeira. Why was it necessary to have a second, uh, uh, a second voyage? Well, Cook's first voyage had not categorically disproved the existence of the great southern land, uh, which he had been looking for, but had raised serious doubts about its existence. And just to remind you, of course, this is not just a great southern land for the um, for the fun of it, uh, is a great southern land which will bring enormous riches, as South America, as the Americas did, um, to whichever um, uh, more technological uh, society uh, managed to uh, discover them. And this second expedition uh, took off in a context of uh, international competition, in particular from uh, the good old French and the good old Spanish. Um, for example, um, uh, the French uh, expeditions around this time were, uh, in 1769, uh, Surville, um, who set off in the privately owned uh, Saint-Jean-Baptiste, that was the name of his ship, uh, and he was actually in New Zealand at the same time as Cook was there in the uh, in, uh, in endeavour. Um, Surville had less luck than Cook, uh, and he drowned in 1770, but he was not the only French explorer ship around. Uh, Marion Dufresne, left for Tahiti uh, in 1771 uh, and he was in, in one of his aims among others was to return to Tahiti the uh, Tahitian Aotudo who had been brought to France by Bougainville um, not that long previously um, the uh, Tahitian uh, died um, on the voyage uh, and Dufresne uh, was killed by Maori in New Zealand in 1772, um, having charted parts of the North, I North Island of New Zealand. And Dufresne, when he charted the uh, the north parts of the, the Northern Island, the parts of the Northern Island, he thought he was the first person to chart it. He didn't know um, that uh, James Cook uh, had already uh, been there. The Spanish had also reacted to the different... Uh, British initiatives. They had formally annexed Easter Island. Easter Island, of course, would be the one that's famous for those, those enormous and, and magnificent uh, statues. Uh, and they had also, the Spanish had also sent missionaries to Tahiti. So he, there you see um, a religious aspect to colonial expansion, which is uh, less directly present um, in the uh, the uh, British uh, attempts uh, uh, around Cook. So basically the um, the international competition uh, reminds us what the the what uh, Cook's expeditions were all about uh, about uh, initial scouting to have the information to know which are the, those uh, islands and indeed continents if possible which it's possible to trade with or uh, uh, use for, for, uh, for other purposes. 
So Ofcook goes with his uh, instructions. Uh, and I have here some of his instructions from the Royal, um, from not from the Royal Society at all, from the Admiralty. You are to make the best of your way to the Cape of Good Hope, where you are to refresh the sloops companies and take on board such provisions and necessaries as you may stand in need of. You are, if possible, to leave the Cape of Good Hope by the end of October or the beginning of November next and proceeding to the southward endeavour to fall in with Cape Circumcision. If you are to discover Cape Circumcision, you are to satisfy yourself whether it is part of that southern continent which has so much engaged the attention of geographers and former navigators or part of an island. So these are all from the instructions from the uh, the instructions of the second um, voyage. So who, what, what was this uh, circumstan uh, Sorry, this circ Cape Circumcision um, that he was to look for? Uh, it's a small peninsula which was sighted by the uh, French uh, naval exploration um, led by uh, Charles Bouvet de Lusier, uh, and it had been sighted in January 1739. Um, which, which is the day of the Feast of the Circumcision, as I'm sure you realise. Um, uh, now, in fact, um, Bouvet had, uh, had made a mistake and he had not left the correct, not written down the correct coordinates. Um, and so, in fact, uh, uh, Cook will not find it and indeed it will not be found again until the 19th century. To go back to the uh, instructions, what else uh, uh, can I tell you about the uh, in, uh, instructions? So if you, if uh, Cook finds uh, uh, Cape Circumcision, he's to uh, explore it uh, and t take views of the of the bay and the harbours uh, uh, and so on, um, and making such notations thereon as may be useful either to navigation or commerce. And you are also to carefully observe the nature of the soil and the produce thereof, the animals and fowls that inhabit or frequent it, the fishes that are to be found in the rivers or upon the coast and in what plenty. And in case there are any which are peculiar to that country, you are to describe them as minutely and to make as correct drawings of them as you can. So we see here that there is a, um, a desire to know which lands are worthy of uh, commerce or more. Uh, and of course, if you're, if you're going to uh, control commerce to a particular place, you need to know where the best harbours are and so on. Uh, and we can also see, I think, here that there's no contradiction p between the aim as scientific explorers and the aim as imperial scouts. The two things just simply uh, fit together. More of these instructions. If you find any mines and minerals or valuable stones, you are to bring home specimens of each, as also of the seeds of trees, shrubs, plants, fruits and grains peculiar to the country that you may be able to collect. And you are to transmit them to our secretary that we may cause proper examination and experiments to be made of them. Uh, and indeed, both the first expedition and the second and the third um, brought back, back to Britain an enormous collection of uh, plants, um, seeds and animals. Um, uh, the uh, study and cataloguing of them did not go quite as smoothly as had been intended. And indeed, some of them were not catalogued until many, many, until several decades later. Uh, but this was... Uh, Certainly for the scientific community uh, in, in, in Britain and indeed in Europe, the, the what was brought back from the endeavour had already uh, caused a tremendous amount of excitement and, um, and the botanists were uh, working away uh, at, at, catalog, uh, at cataloging, cataloging them. It has to be said that uh, <coughs> botany was an extremely important science uh, and indeed the Royal Society put it right at the centre uh, of its uh, of its endeavours for a very long time. Um, I think this was while Joseph Banks was indeed the the uh, president. What about the uh, local peoples? What did the instructions for the second voyage have to say about the local peoples? You are like, likewise to observe the genius, temper, disposition and number of the natives or inhabitants, if there be any. 
So the genius, that is to say, the character, the particular character of each people. You know, so this is a, a not a. Uh, this is, I, I think it's fair to say, this rather traditional view of people that they have, each people has a nature. Um, you know, so you have the warlike peoples and the peace-like loving peoples. Um, and this is natural to them. This is not an idea which uh, uh, only existed in Cook's time. Uh, in the First World War, when many uh, Indian um, soldiers were recruited to defend the British uh, uh, Empire, um, it was openly considered that that uh, those Indian those Indians from some regions and some peoples were warlike and uh, from other regions they were not warlike and therefore the recruitment was absolutely concentrated on particular parts of India so this is a, a, a traditional view but not one uh, which is uh, going to disappear very, very, very quickly. To go back to the instructions uh, uh, he is asked to endeavour by all proper means to cultivate to cultivate a friendship and alliance with them making them presents of such trinkets as they value they may value inviting them to traffic and showing them every kind of civility and regard, but taking care nevertheless not to suffer yourself to be surprised by them, but to be always on your guard against any accident. You are, with the consent of the natives, to take possession of convenient situations in the country in the name of the King of Great Britain and to distribute among the inhabitants some of the medals with which you have been furnished to remain as traces of your having been there. So we see here again the expression with the consent of the natives, which uh, it's, uh, it is, is, is clearly, let's say, um, quite distant from the practice uh, of any of the three uh, expeditions. He's then asked to continue uh, as far south as he can, and I quote, prosecuting your discoveries as near to the South Pole as possible. Then proceed to the eastward in further so search of the said continents, as well as to make discovery of such islands as there may be situated in that unexplored part of the Southern Hemisphere. Keeping in as high latitudes as you can, and prosecuting your discoveries as before directed as near to the pole as possible. Until by circumnavigating the, the globe, you fall in again with Cape Circumcision. You are to observe with accuracy the situation of such islands as you may discover in the course of your voyage, which have not hitherto been discovered by any Europeans, and to make surveys and drafts and take possession for his majesty, of such of them as may appear to be of consequence in the same manner as directed with respect to the continent. Uh, and the final part of the instructions, well, perhaps not the final part, but the final part that I have, uh, suggests that uh, as soon as he gets back to England, uh, he must immediately go to see the uh, Admiralty uh, and also make sure that he brings the only copies of any logs and journals which are kept. Uh, so any officers or men who keep journals are to hand them over to the captain um, uh, um, uh, 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 at, the, at the end. So who were the uh, other um, people uh, jumping on the boat with James Cook and with uh, uh, these instructions in his pocket? Well, uh, I mentioned that Banks has withdrawn and in replacement it is Johann Reinhold Forster who is appointed natural historian and his son George as assistant. We will hear about these two later on uh, because um, they will uh, try to uh, fundamentally make money out of uh, uh, writing uh, an account of the voyage uh, to the uh, considerable uh, chagrin of the Admiralty. Uh, another um, naturalist came on board at uh, the Cape of Good Hope in, Hope in South Africa uh, in uh, October. Uh, the, the two astronomers, William Wales, William Bailey's, and uh, sorry, the three astronomers, sorry, the two astronomers, William Wales and William Bailey's, uh, and William Hodges was the official artist. Uh, and Hodges will notably uh, produce the um, first ever sketches and paintings of floating ice. 
Off they went then on the 13th of July, 1772, going round the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, in South Africa, they took on, uh, they took on supplies uh, and uh, Cook discovered that uh, 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 Admiral Kerguelen had discovered an island which might be part of the southern continent. Uh, and so he decides to begin by going off to uh, look uh, 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 at that and off they go um, south. And by use of ingenious high technology, you can see here, uh, then the route uh, followed uh, for the uh, second expedition. Um, by the time the uh, two uh, tours of the south that you've just seen uh, were over, um, uh, Cook was able to write uh, in his journal, I have now done with the Southern Pacific Ocean and flatter myself that no one will think that I have left it unexplored or that more could have been done in one void towards obtaining that end than has been done in this. Uh, and so off he uh, heads uh, home, arriving in South Africa in March 1775. Uh, it's on arrival in South Africa um, that he discovers the publication by Hawksworth um, of, his, of uh, uh, his account of the Endeavour Voyage, uh, um, and uh, he is furious. Uh, not always, not perhaps for the only reasons which are mentioned in, in most of the books, but partly uh, it was because Hawksworth was, was, was making an absolute fortune with it, uh, but also very much because Hawk was, Hawksworth was a writer and his priorities were very, very different um, from um, those of Cook. Cook was a sailor, he wanted everything to be precisely um, precisely accurate, whereas uh, Hawksworth wanted it to be readable. Uh, so Hawksworth didn't hesitate to put into Cook's mouth things which in fact had been written by Joseph Banks in his journal uh, and just generally make something far more readable than Cook's journals were. And, and indeed, it's, it's true that Hawksworth's uh, uh, account is far more readable uh, the, um, the, than, than, than Cook's. Um, this will lead to uh, a number of results, one of them <coughs> being an attempt by Cook for his account of the second voyage to make sure he was in control uh, of the publication. Not only because uh, uh, he was going to make the money from it, but including that, uh, and I will be re referring you to, to, to some documents about this. Uh, Hawksworth, uh, Hawksworth was asked by the Admiralty to, to write the account of the, of the first expedition and, uh, and was paid what was at the time an enormous amount of money to do so. And he was a very, he was a very skilled uh, writer. Uh, and indeed, uh, I think I recommended to you recently the issue of Astrolabe or Astrolab, the um, French university journal which has just published um, online and free um, their issue uh, to James Cook's Voyages Revisited 250 Years Afterwards, which uh, um, is the written follow-up to a university conference at uh, Sorbonne uh, last February. Um, and uh, the reason I mention it is that the, the, the article there written by uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Mr. Massiani, uh, Dr. Massiani, um, uh, what, what Cook saw and what Hawksworth wrote, something like that, uh, is uh, indispensable reading, as of course is, is my own article about Cook and museum exhibitions. Well, uh, I decided to do this uh, this class uh, half an hour at a time, uh, and so I'm going to stop there. Uh, and uh, no doubt tomorrow, but perhaps the following day, we will have the next half hour. I'm not exactly sure how many half hours there are involved, uh, but I think it's good for you to have it in bite-sized chunks, uh, because I don't think you would be watching to. You would be watching me give a two and a half hour lecture um, especially not in video form. So um, have a good day, take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you very soon.